Good morning, good evening, hello, welcome to our video uh, webinar on how to secure housing in the United States. We are so excited that you have joined us today. So welcome, see everybody jumping in on the chat. Um, hello, so excited. Um, before we begin, this is the first ever relocation webinar that we've done here at Worldwide Health Staff Solutions. Um, we're very excited about that, but we are so interested to see the states that you're going to be moving to here in the U.S. So if you can ju jump on the chat and tell us where you're going to be moving to, we'd love to hear that. And we'll jump into introductions. All right. Hey. Well, today talking with you a little, we're going to be talking with you a little bit about how to secure housing in the United States um, and tips and tricks um, that we've learned and seen through our thousands of arrivals here to the United States. Um, to introduce myself, my name is Ashley Wheatley. I am the Director of Relocation here at Worldwide, and I am going to be talking to you a little bit of when you need to begin we're um, searching for your housing and also I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to search for housing in the U.S. I'd also like to introduce our Megan Jenkins and Molly Linehan, who are senior relocation team. Who they work with you and all of our wonderful candidates in relocating to the United States each and every day. So we pass it over to introduce them. Good morning. My name is Megan Jenkins. I'm a senior relocation coordinator. I've been here at Worldwide for about a year now. Um, I definitely enjoy working with you guys. And today I'll just be talking a little bit about some of our resources and partnerships that we have here at Worldwide to assist you with housing and also some additional temporary housing options. And I'm going to pass it over to Molly. Thank you, Megan. So glad to be here with you all today. My name is Molly Lenahan. I've been here with Worldwide for a little under a year now. Um, and I'm very excited to discuss with you guys today securing housing um, before having your social security number, as well as just some tips and tricks um, for looking into housing and getting that secured. Awesome. Thank you so much, Megan and Molly. I look forward to all the information that you're going to share with us today. To begin, um, we are going to go in to tell you a little bit about the housing industry, some tips and tricks that we have to secure housing. And then at the end, we're going to be having a question and answer session. So as we're talking, please feel free to jump in the chat, ask us some questions. And then at the end, we'll go through and we'll answer as many as we can. All right. So to begin, the first big question, the big challenge that we have with the housing market is when do you begin looking for your housing? Right. And the answer is simple, but a little complex. Answer is you want to begin searching for your housing as soon as possible. But there's kind of a caveat to that. Um, you want to make sure that your facility location has been confirmed and that you've been assigned a relocation coordinator. So once you have received your visa, you're ready to come, your facility's here, and you've been assigned a relocation coordinator, that is when you want to begin searching for your housing. And you can do that all before coming to the United States. So with that being our main tip and trick at the very beginning, we have some more tips to help you while searching um, for your housing. And those include these, right? So once you have been assigned to relocation coordinator and you're gonna be coming to the United States, you wanna start looking for housing in, or sorry, working, looking for housing online with Google. Um, that's your first step. Best way to do that. In the United States, every city is broken up into neighborhoods or zones. And these zones um, are associated with what's called a zip code, right? A zip code is a five div digit number that is associated with a neighborhood or boundary um, in the United States. And that is gonna be your first tip with how to search for housing is to find zip code that is associated with your facility location. How do you do that? You go to Google and you type in your facility name. When you type in your facility name, the address of that facility will come up. And at the very end of that address, there's gonna be a five digit code. That is your zip code. You can also search in Google. You can say, what is the zip code of, 
and you can say Charlotte, North Carolina, or Cincinnati, Ohio, whatever your city is, and the zip code will come up. Sometimes you'll see that there are many zip codes. You want to make sure that that zip code is associated with where your facility location is. What do you do next? After you have the zip code of where you're where you're going or where your facility is, you're going to want to take that zip code and bring it to many of these websites that we have. We have apartments.com, we have forrent.com, apartment finder. These are all great websites where you can search with that zip code to find individual housing that's near uh, your facility location. Now, you don't want to just focus on the area near your facility location. You want to look at the neighborhoods that are surrounding it. So you can also look for the zip code that are surrounding your facility location. I and mean, the reason why you want to look for those is there's many factors when searching for housing that you want to look at. You want to look for safety. You want to look for uh, accessibility with driving, with how you're going to get to your apartment. You also want to know your budget. Some zip codes are going to be more expensive than others. Um, but the more research that you can do before you arrive um, on Google um, and even on Google Maps, um, you're, the more prepared you're going to be when arriving. Google Maps, like I just mentioned, is a great tool. You can get down on the street and walk um, walk how you're going to get to work every day. You can walk the streets to see how to get to the closest grocery store. Those are all things that are going to help you. And in the end, as you're searching, be sure to get in touch with your relocation coordinator who can help you answer many of these questions and can give you these websites and tell you a little bit more about each individual zip code. All right. Well, that's just a little bit about when to begin searching for housing and a little bit of some tips and tricks on how to do your initial search. And I'd like to turn the time over to Megan to give you some more resources to do that. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate it. Um, so today I just wanted to talk a little bit about some resources and partnerships that we here at Worldwide have created to help you guys um, when you come over to secure housing and also temporary housing upon arrival. Um, the first resource that we're going to talk a little bit about is Furnish Finder. Furnish Finder uh, is actually an online website tool um, that offers move-in ready apartments, houses, and rooms. Um, they specialize or they focus more so on international and uh, traveling nurses, um, and they really try to cater to the medical professional uh, viewpoint. So they are very happy to have you all. Uh, Furnish Finder is a very, very great tool uh, that we have partnered with. You can go on the website, type in your city, uh, the date that you want to move in, and also the price point that you would like to stay within to find a house or an apartment. Um, so I definitely suggest that. If you ever need any type of uh, proof of status letter, uh, there are some great landlords on there uh, that you can talk with and your relocation coordinator can definitely provide you with a proof of status letter uh, if more information is required. I'd also like to talk a little bit more about Extended Stay America. We also have a great partnership with them as well. Uh, they are a uh, extended stay hotel. Um, and if you have questions about any of these resources, you could definitely always uh, email or reach out to your relocation coordinator and we can provide you with more information on them. We are also right now um, looking to expand and make more partnerships as well uh, to offer you guys more opportunities and um, options, I'm sorry, and more options for temporary housing and also permanent housing when you come over because we definitely want to give you as much information and as many resources as we can upon arrival. In addition, uh, we also advise that you come over with a plan of where you're going to stay for the first 30 days. Um, for example, if you have an apartment but it's not quite ready to be moved in yet, uh, here are some temporary housing options that you can stay for maybe for a week or a couple of nights just while you're waiting to move into your temp into your permanent housing. Uh, these include Airbnb, Verbal, Sonder, and HomeAway. Um, they all have their own websites in which you can visit and look to secure either a room or a full house for you and your family to stay in. 
Um, even if you do have an apartment before you arrive in the U.S., we do advise having just a temporary housing stay, at least for the first few nights, um, because when you arrive in the U.S., more than likely you will still need to secure furniture and other furnishings for your home. Uh, and with that, I'm going to pass it over to Molly, and she's going to give you a few more tips and tricks. Thank you, Megan. Uh, today, guys, I just wanted to really discuss um, securing housing before receiving your social security number. We do understand that this is a barrier many of our <clears throat> international nurses um, face when they are coming to the United States and wanting to secure an apartment before they have that social security number. Now, I do want to preface that we have seen success with many of nurses um, securing housing before their arrival, um, meaning before they have that social security number. So it is possible. Um, but the reason that these um, apartment complexes are asking for that social security number when you're applying for them is because they want to check for your credit history. Now, of course, you're a new immigrant to the United States, you're not going to have credit history. Now, the best way to kind of combat some of the um, lack of Com communication between you and a complex or a landlord and about what your specific situation is, is to call them directly. You know, um, there are forms of emailing or doing an online application, but calling them directly is going to set them up for success ahead of time so that they are understanding of your situation and know that as soon as your application comes through, you're going to be a unique case. Um, so notifying that landlord, notifying the complex of, you know, the status of your new immigration here to the United States, explaining to them that you're not going to have a social security number or, or credit history, and seeing what can be negotiated um, to combat some of these issues and see what we can do in place of having these two um, qualifications or requirements that they need. Um, so things that we can kind of do here to um, negotiate with them is advise that we can provide a proof of employment letter, um, which would state your salary listed. That can be a reconfirmation letter on hand that is given by your employer. Um, your relocation coordinator can also provide you with a proof of status letter. That proof of status letter serves as additional proof of your sponsorship here in the United States and and that your employer is sponsoring you to be working here full time under the salary discussed in that reconfirmation letter. Negotiating larger deposits instead of having a credit check, and uh, we've seen success with this, um, being able to put down a larger amount of money um, up front so that we can com uh, kind of bypass that credit history check. Um, securing a cosigner, such as a trusted family, or, uh, family member or friend, is a great option um, since we don't have a social security number or credit history. And then the very last tip here we see is exploring the housing options early. This is going to give you plenty of time to discuss with the landlord or complex to negotiate these um, situations and um, discuss the best way of getting you approved for your apartment. Um, now with that being said, I'm going to jump over and just kind of jump into a few more housing tips that we have here for you. Um, just a few things for you guys to note and be aware of. Um, a really big one here that I want you guys to be aware of is that apartments do typically require that your monthly income be about two to three times the rent. Um, exact income requirements, of course, vary. So what you're going to do is, again, calling that apartment complex directly. It's going to give you all the information that you need, as well as you're going to give all the information the complex needs. Create an open line of communication so you're fully aware before applying. Um, consider the distance from your facility and the transportation available um, from that apartment complex, um, whether that be public transportation or getting your own vehicle. Um, but considering the distance from your facility is um, an ideal way of making sure that you're comfortable and you're set up for success here um, in the United States. Um, if you're coming over with children, considering school zones and looking into options of schools for your children um, is going to be very, very important. Um, take that time to really um, look on Google and um, Google local schools and reviews and options and make sure that your housing um, is, is close enough for them to get to school comfortably and then you getting to work as well. 
Finding a roommate is a great tip for housing. Um, to Facebook, social media sites, um, Megan mentioned earlier, Furnished Finders, they offer rooms for rent as well, um, which can be a discounted price because you have extra people to help um, with expenses. Um, I think that it's a great idea um, to safely find a roommate to live with here in the United States. Now do be careful of scams. Um, don't sign up to have a roommate with someone until you've met them in public um, and person Person, and always be safe, of course. I'm um, talking with your fellow nurses is always a great idea. However, there's also those um, Facebook pages and groups that you can find um, right through uh, the internet. It is essential that you have housing for your first 30 days here in the United States. Um, this is a very stressful time, your first 30 days. So I do highly recommend that you um, look into as many options as you can and you find the best thing for you um, and your family for coming with family. Um, your relocation coordinator here is here to help look into these housing options. They're also here to discuss what is offered by your employer and kind of coming up with the best plan based off of what's offered by your employer and what's available in your assigned facility location. Um, and then my final tip of the day is a very, very big one. Um, no matter what reimbursement you are getting or no matter what housing allowance you are getting from your employer, I do highly recommend that you use any reimbursements that you are receiving or any housing allowance that you are going to receive from your employer um, to pay yourself back for your accommodations that you are going to secure before your arrival. I wouldn't rely on this upfront um, just because we want you to be comfortable, we want you to be happy, we want to make sure that you have everything you need to be successful here. Um, use any reimbursements coming to you later to reimburse yourself back for any relocation expenses you have come into. Um, but I think that's wrapping up my um, housing tips slide here. Um, so I'll go ahead and get it passed right back over to Ashley. Awesome. Thank you so much, Megan and Molly. Those were incredible tips to really help with the hard and tedious process of securing housing in the U.S. Please know that our team knows how hard this can be and we are there to help. So please reach out to your relocation coordinator um, and the relocation team to help you to secure your individual needs and cases um, with coming to the United States. So with that said, we are very excited to come into our question and answer portion of this webinar. Um, so please, if you have a question or um, a comment that you'd like, go ahead and jump in and enter that into the chat and we'll take a look at it. Um, Megan will be going through and selecting questions and me and Molly will be here to help answer that. So if you go ahead and jump in, we'll pass it to Megan. Oh, Megan, you are on mute. I apologize. Uh, I'm going to be taking a few questions here from the chat for Ashley and Molly. And our first question is, um, what is the process if we consider a guarantor to assure the approval of apartment application? I love that. That's a really great question. So um, a guarantor is also considered a co-signer. So that is someone who is using their own personal credit history um, or their, their credit check um, to be able to help you secure yours. So basically, um, they're guaranteeing that if you don't cover your expenses, um, that they can come in and cover your expenses. So you want that to really be a trusted friend or family member um, that you know well and who they know you well. Um, the process for that is, is just like Molly spoke to a minute ago, is you're going to want to call the complex or the landlord of whoever you're going to be renting from or uh, obtaining a mortgage from, in some cases, if you're securing housing. Um, and you're going to want to talk with them because they're going to have an individual process of how that looks. Um, but in most, most cases, you're going to call them and they're going to work with you to um, have the co-signer or guarantor um, sign pieces of paper, um, indicate and passing over their credit history. Um, so, uh, Molly, was there anything you'd like to add to that? No, that was perfectly said, Ashley. Um, if you have that trusted family member or friend, I think that this is a great option so that you can secure housing before having any credit here in the United States and having that social security number. 
All right. Thank you, ladies. Um, the next question I have from the chat is, does Worldwide Health staff give a housing allowance to nurse aid candidates? This is a great question, guys. Um, this really depends upon who um, you're employed by. Um, so your employer is going to offer a different relocation package um, for each of their nurses. Um, so this will be a great discussion to have with your relocation coordinator as soon as you're assigned. Um, those relocation coordinators have full details of what's available to you, um, and they'll go over that step by step and give you a full rundown of what's offered to you so that you can better prepare for your arrival here in the United States. Um, would you add anything to that, Ashley? Yeah, the only thing I would add is you can also find that information on your offer letter. Um, and your recruiter who's talking with you will also have access to all the reimbursements and relocation packages that will be uh, given to you um, based on your offer. All right, thank you, Molly and Ashley. My next question from the chat is, in addition to rent, what other bills um, should candidates prepare to pay for in regards to housing? I love that question. Oh, guys, you're doing great. Um, so rent is is a big um, is a big monthly expense. Um, here in the United States, there's there's also other expenses called utilities. Um, and these are gonna be your water, your electricity bill. Um, if you would like Wi-Fi, um, those are all monthly bills that are gonna be associated um, with your rent. Now, some apartment complexes will have utilities included. Um, Furnished Finder or Partnership, many of those apartment complexes actually include utilities into the rent, which is really awesome. Um, but when you're securing an apartment, there's one other expense that's kind of upfront to note. It's your deposit. Um, you're going to when Sorry. When you sign up to um, get an apartment, they're also going to have you put some money down called a deposit, which if you have no damage to the property by the end of your contracted time, they'll give it back to you in most cases. Um, Molly, is there anything else you'd add to that? Any other expenses? No, that's perfect. And then, of course, um, just other expenses on a on a normal basis, you know, your groceries expenses um, monthly and um, if you have any insurance that needs to be paid and other things that aren't associated directly with rent, but kind of go into the full monthly expenses um, as you come over here to the United States. All right. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate that. Moving on to our next question. What are some factors to consider when choosing a housing location? And also, how do you choose a safe housing location? Or kind of how do you know what areas are safe? I think that this is a great question. Um, I highly recommend doing your research online. Um, talking with any fellow nurses that are going to the same location, jumping on Facebook and seeing what reviews are from around that area. Um, these are all great ways to kind of um, learn the whereabouts of the location um, and see um, what options you have available there for you. Um, many times on Google, apartment complexes will have reviews from um, previous attendees or um, current people living there. Um, so I think that that is going to be your best bet of finding safe areas. And another great option is if you have time to speak with your employer before your arrival in the United States and before you've secured housing, um, you know, someone there with your employers has their feet on the ground in that specific location, and they can kind of give you the rundown on the local area areas to avoid or good areas um, to consider, or maybe even popular complexes or, or housing areas um, that other nurses stay at that work at your um, hospital. Um, what would you add to that, Ashley? Awesome. Thank you, Molly. Um, first and foremost, um, as safety is a big concern, right, there are several websites online that can actually give you reviews on different neighborhoods, one of them being Neighborhood Scout, um, which is a website that I've used in the past um, to kind of get an idea of what um, the amenities are in an area and also just reviews on um, safety. Um, the other thing you can do um, is get in home 
hold of a realtor in the area who can kind of give you the layout of different neighborhoods to look at, those kind of things. And it's always better to call than it is to um, to email. That's going to give you a more personal touch um, to really go over your needs. One of the other questions, the first part of that question was also, what are some specific uh, points that you want to look for? Um, first, you want to look for the school. If you have children, you want to look at the school zones, um, see what schools are associated, the distance they are from your home. Um, second, and I say first for schools, that's if you have children, but I mean, uh, big factor that you want to look at is the distance that that apartment is from your facility location. And that's going to be primarily driven by how you are going to get to work or how you plan to get to work. Um, in the United States, it is essential um, in most areas to have a car um, to get around. Um, and so if that is your plan or you're in an area that does not have access to public transportation, which is a lot of the United States, um, you're going to really want to focus on the distance that facility is from your home. Um, there's expenses that come with that. Um, another thing you want to look at is the relationship of where you're living to grocery stores, um, to entertainment in the area. You, I would have the best advice I would get is sit down and write a list of the top five things that are super important to you when it comes to housing. Um, write down what those lists are um, and begin your search looking and filtering for those things. Sometimes you might have to compromise based on avail availability, but make a list of what is super important to you and what something maybe you could be a little bit flexible on. All right. Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate that. Um, and rounding out, I'm going to come to our last question here. Uh, we have a few candidates who want to know what can they do to secure a home and a mortgage here in the U.S. Um, once they arrive here and they've been here for a while or if they don't want to do get an apartment upon arrival, what can they do uh, to secure a home in the U.S.? That's a great question. And this kind of ties back to um, credit history. So in the United States, um, having U.S. credit history is super important. So my best advice is when you get to the United States, you want to search out ways that you can build your credit history. And so you're going to wait till you get your social security number. Um, ways to do that is to apply for a credit card, um, a simple one, and make sure that you don't go into debt. Um, stay out of debt. Just if you have the money, um, then you use it on the credit card and you just pay the credit card off. And that's a great way to build credit. Um, when you're going to secure a home, um, they're going to be looking at your credit history. So if you begin to to build credit now, um, when you're ready to get a home, you're going to have the credit you need to get a really good rate. The next thing you want to do when you're ready to secure a home um, is you want to look online to see if you can get pre-qualified for a mortgage. I um, mean, there's several ways to do that. If you don't know how to do that, it goes into the second thing is you want to get in hold of a realtor. Um, we do have a partnership with Remax Realty um with doctor relocation if you talk with your relocation coordinator they can give you the link to that um, but there are many great realtors out in the united states that are willing to help you they'll personally take you through neighborhoods they'll talk to you and they can help you get pre-qualified for a mortgage um molly was there anything else you'd want to add to that no i think that was perfectly said ashley all right, ladies. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of our question and answer portion. I apologize that we weren't able to get to everyone's questions, but definitely hold on to those questions um, and be sure to send them over to your relocation coordinator or also feel free to chat with one of our live recruiters using the link shown on the screen here. Um, or also, if you haven't reached the relocation phase yet, but you want to um, you may have some questions, feel free to reach out to your case manager as well. And those case man and your case manager will get those questions over to us and we'll get you some answers. All right, and I'm gonna pass it back to Ashley. Um, thank you, Megan and Molly, and this has been a great session. And thanks to all of you for attending. Your questions have been wonderful. Um, I wish we could have got to them all, um, but again, please reach out to our team. We'd love to answer them and work with them. 
With those questions, we are very excited to announce that we will be attending a mobility, an international mobility conference this next week, where we hope to gather even more information about the housing industry. Um, and we are excited to bring that to you upon our return. So please look forward to our future webinars where we're gonna come on and give you even more information to help with all the aspects of the relocation. Um, the relocation transition phase of your life, um, which we're very, very excited about. Um, and lastly, I'm sorry, I just wanted to add, um, when you get a chance, be sure to visit our applicant resources page. Everything that we talked about today is also gonna be listed there as far as our partnerships, um, some great resources for you, our USA Arrival Guide, any of that great information is gonna be listed there for you. If you need the link, be sure to reach out to your relocation coordinator or your case manager, and they can definitely provide that for you. Um, and we look forward to speaking with you all again in our future webinars. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye for now. Thank you guys so much. Um, make sure to follow us. <laughs>